Hey there, I'm Drew from BorrowLenses.com. Over the last few months, we've seen a ton of industries lean into content and deliver it right to potential customers' inboxes as a way to shift and survive under our current circumstances. One of those industries is real estate. With fewer people able or willing to check out a house in person nowadays, the photos and videos representing a property need to make an immediate impact. And apparently they are. Clients are happily embracing virtual tours, professional photos, and the wild card, real estate video, as long as they're useful and engaging. Basically, don't champion amazing content when a potential home buyer clicks a link and sees something like this. Look, it's not your fault. In my opinion, real estate video suffers from a bit of an identity crisis. While professional photos have been a must for a long time and 3D tours are becoming increasingly popular, video has struggled to find a consistent foothold in the industry. And I think that's because no one really knows what it should be. So in this video, we get industry specific, providing real estate video ideas to help you create engaging, impactful real estate video content. So before we start shooting, it's important to establish the purpose of a real estate video in the first place because it will influence the way we shoot. Now, don't take the easy way out and say it's to help sell a house. Sure, that's a given. Be realistic. I've always viewed it like a movie trailer. Showcase the best parts of the home in an entertaining way in order to build excitement to see the real thing. Good quality photos can tell you what the house looks like, a 3D tour can show you the flow of the home, and bullet points can give you the hard info. But it's video that can piece the entire story together and convey emotion along with it. Not to mention, serve as great brand building for agents. Even when the home is sold, you're creating a library of dynamic, outside the box marketing tools to show what you bring to the table for your clients. So we know what we want out of it, but how do you shoot real estate video? We wanna build excitement, and I've tried to achieve that through constant movement. I'm not trying to mimic an in-person walkthrough or reveal things as the shot progresses. By the time the first frame of a shot hits the screen, the viewer's probably seen all the important details I'm trying to show. But movement keeps them from getting bored like they might be if I'm just using a static shot. Now, I've typically utilized one of two things to achieve this movement, a gimbal and a slider. Since they've become more intuitive and compact, gimbals have become the go-to, and it's easy to see why. You can really unleash your creativity when it comes to movement and give you free reign over the house. The issue is you can get a little carried away with all that freedom. When I use a gimbal, I try to mimic the same types of shots I'd get on a slider or jib. This keeps me in check and prevents my movements from getting away from me. Longer shots become harder to control and more difficult to smoothly fit in your edit if you didn't time it just right. Now a slider is definitely more cumbersome, can make it more difficult to move from room to room and it limits the amount of ground you can cover in any one given shot. The benefit, however, is it puts you firmly in control of your shots by giving you an established track. This will make your edit easier and give the video consistency and rhythm as opposed to working with random movements that may or may not flow together all that smoothly. A couple slider quick tips. Two tripods mounted on both ends will always yield a more stable shot and a fluid head on top provides versatility for more dynamic movements and positioning you may think you're missing out on by foregoing that gimbal. Also, don't feel like you need to go with the longest possible slider. I guarantee by the time you go end to end, you've already cut to the next shot in the edit anyways. Whichever way we choose to go, it won't affect our lens choice. A wide angle lens is a must, but we need to be careful as we go wide, but not too wide. Sure, we wanna make the room seem big, but not to the point where it's starting to look distorted and creeping up on a fisheye look. Find that sweet spot that balances wide, but not unnatural. For me, I usually find that at about 14 or 16 millimeters, but giving myself a little bit of zoom range to play around with is always a good idea. What's the best camera for real estate videos? There's no clear cut winner here, but it's important to give yourself options. Since we're shooting with movement in mind, the ability to shoot in 60 frames per second or 4K or potentially both will be helpful so we can reframe or add some further stabilization when editing. 
Do you need to shoot in raw or log for real estate? Honestly, it's up to you and your skill level. Sure, shooting this way will take in more information and give you better flexibility in post, but turnaround time is typically more important than anything else for real estate videos. And that flat log image requires way more time for color grading. Personally, I save myself the time, effort, and frustration. I shoot a ton of both stills and video on the Fuji X-T3 because it has great internal compression and I'm happy with the color I get straight out of the camera. A lot of people will emphasize cameras with great dynamic range for this kind of shoot. Makes sense, especially if we want to capture particular views while still keeping the integrity of the interior shot. However, this will always be a point of struggle for most cameras, leaving you with the choice of exposing for the room or exposing for the view. The truth is, no amount of dynamic range will have the impact on your shot that a light will. So do you need a light for shooting real estate? All I say is consistent and proper lighting is the number one differentiator between amateur and professional video. Yes, it's one more thing to carry from room to room, but it's a great feeling heading into a shoot knowing you're equipped with what you need to at least give you a fighting chance at elements of the house that are working against you. So now it's time for post. How do you edit a real estate video? Movement is only one part of the equation to building excitement here. This is where a lot of virtual tours go wrong. It's not enough to get good gear and a gimbal and stroll through a house. This isn't season one of True Detective. A continuous five minute shot is not drawing anyone in here, especially a potential buyer. There's no excitement in this. Not to mention, we can no longer hide inconsistencies in lighting, natural motion as we run out of room and need to backtrack, and that creepy guy with the camera that haunts the house. We should control the movement and the pace, not the house. Movement needs proper pacing to create the energy we're looking for. And we create that in the edit by making quick, deliberate cuts and avoiding jarring transitions, which is why I warned against those big elaborate movements we hopefully limited while shooting. When it comes to music for real estate videos, it can play a crucial role in the editing process. Cutting shots to a beat creates a natural rhythm and momentum to the video therefore introducing good pacing and excitement to the viewer without them even really thinking about the song itself. Choose something palatable, upbeat, and most importantly, that you didn't steal without permission. So whether you're an agent looking to make a listing stand out from the rest, a video pro who wants to mix up your portfolio, or a real estate photographer who wants to offer a new service, think about these tips as you get into real estate video production. When you break it down, it's no different than any other project. Think about why you're doing it, light and shoot the scene properly, and simply try to make something you or I would wanna watch. Even if we're not in the market for a house, it's a lot easier to pass along quality content that catches our eye to a friend who is. So, got a question? Wanna go over anything else? Does the short hair look okay, or should I have stuck with salad as the main course up top? Leave it in the comments below and check out borrowlenses.com to see how else we can help.